I work 40 hours and with all my things, I can't afford housing. Being a working poor class citizen is the worst. I thought I was gonna die outside, so this saved our lives. And I think that's what a lot of people need to realize when they complain about having a unit with no electricity or plumbing, that we didn't have that stuff outside anyway. Only one in every four people that qualify for housing assistance actually receive it. So, you know, inherently we have homelessness built into the system where we're only helping 25% of the people that qualify for it. Until, until we do something about that, you know, places like this are going to remain necessary. Last year, more than half a million people in the U.S. experienced homelessness on a given night. In Oregon, there are nearly 14,000 homeless people. That's a 6% increase from 2015 to 2017. Housing is a big issue here. Oregon has a pretty high rate of its homeless population. A pretty high rate is unsheltered comparatively to other places. Um, I, I don't think any, any, um, any city in the country can adequately uh, house its uh, population affordably. So um, the West Coast has been a little bit more proactive in trying alternative solutions to, to dealing with the issue rather than uh, just turning a blind eye to it. One solution is tiny home villages, like Opportunity Village in the city of Eugene. There are 30 micro homes, mostly eight by eight feet in size, with no electricity or plumbing. This is what's known as a transitional housing community, a place providing temporary shelter for homeless people until they can move into more permanent, affordable housing. Applicants must meet certain criteria and go through interviews with a vetting committee. Mine is the white unit with the wheelchair. I lost a lot to the streets. I lost all six of my children to the state of California. And we watched ourselves get passed on waiting list after waiting list. And then we came up here and a year later we were housed. It sounds weird because it's one of those things you take for granted. We would have somewhere to go at the end of the day. One of the hardest things was just not having anywhere to go. Because you watch everyone at about five. You're downtown. And I'm sorry. You're downtown asking people for money just so you could eat. And you watch them in that hurry to go home. And you realize you have nowhere to go to. And so I had kind of lost hope of getting in here. So we've got a 30-foot yurt behind us that kind of serves as the, the central living room. We've got a pellet stove in there, computers with Wi-Fi access. It's a structure big enough to accommodate all the folks in the village to come together. The houses aren't hooked up to utilities, but we've consolidated that to the common facilities. So behind me here we have uh, the bathhouse, which has two bathrooms, a shower room, and laundry. We don't just give people a house, it's, it's, it's part of it. living here is, you know, you're, you're a member of a community, you're expected to come to a weekly meeting that everybody puts in 10 hours a week, uh, either at the front desk or different tasks throughout the village to keep it maintained and such. I don't think, you know, the tiny house village model necessarily makes sense in, uh, you know, like downtown San Francisco or downtown New York because of the density, you know, type issues. But I think it's definitely scalable. This is something that any community can do. More than half of all homeless individuals in the U.S. live in major cities. The rest live in places like Eugene. I've been staying at the village for about three months. I was on the waiting list for probably like three or four months. I had been sleeping out of a camping bag. Uh, didn't want to go to the mission. I had stayed there when I first got to town. None of the people who work there have any sort of like sensitivity training with trauma triggers or anything like that. It was very trans unfriendly, so I didn't feel safe there. I don't need a lot of space. A home is, can be any place that you feel comfortable resting your head, and I don't need much more than that. As long as there's people I love, I will be home. The tiny home village follows the housing first approach. That idea is to provide homes to the homeless, and worry about addressing the underlying causes like drug abuse at a later date. The method helped Utah drastically reduce its chronic homeless population. 
Eugene hopes combining housing first with the tiny house movement will ultimately help more people. It's interesting. They're doing good stuff here, but it's still already only like four years old, this village in particular. So they're still working out a lot of the kinks. And as like a smaller model version of like the social welfare programs, it honestly is, it has, you have to work out the kinks on a smaller scale before you can get there on the bigger scale. When residents were ready to transition to permanent housing, Andrew realized they didn't have many options in the area. So Emerald Village was conceived. The newly built permanent housing community has 22 homes. When we had the capability to take on a second project, we looked at how can we take this model to the next level and develop a more permanent housing model. So all the houses here are designed to meet the building code. They're all plumbed and wired, have a small bathroom and kitchenette and a sleeping and living area. Uh, the cost to live here is $250 to $350 a month, depending on the size of the unit. And that payment covers all of the operating costs, including utilities. So welcome to my humble abode. No, I'm sorry, I always wanted to do that. Um, so this is my living room for all intents and purposes. I read a lot of books, so I don't have a television. Otherwise, it would go somewhere. Um, here's my couch. Um, this is my dinner table. So this folds down. And then I'm able to seat two here and there, obviously. It's pretty neat. Kentrell Davis was one of the first residents to move into Emerald Village. He even helped build his own home. This was a cement pour, um, so I was here for that. I helped do the outside greening of it. It's strange, but every time I look at my walls and every time I like, you know, look out the window, I appreciate it just a little bit more. Being a college student that didn't finish and still have student debt, I want the world to know that this could be one small thing one very minuscule small thing that will put a band-aid on one large issue. But a lot of the issues are, they stem from somewhere else. So even though there is indeed lots of homelessness and very well working poor, there's a reason why so. There's rent being raised. There's cost of living not being raised with it. So I want the world to like catch up and make it so someone who works 40 hours able to afford housing because that's the most important part. So, just rethink. That's all I want. Food for thought. That's it. <laughs>